Welcome to Leveraging Inspiration, the Inspired Patent Podcast, where we explore the world of innovation, creativity, and intellectual property. I'm your host, Wayne Carroll, and I'm excited to bring you insights and stories from the success and failures of others so you can protect your your inspired ideas. Small business owners put so much effort into growing a business and bringing new ideas and solutions to the world. It breaks my heart when I learn of a small business owner that missed opportunities because they did not have the information that they needed. That's why I am here, to help you, the small business owner, to learn how to leverage your inspiration and succeed at making the world a better place. Now before we get started, I am an attorney, I have a disclaimer. This is a podcast and it's for educational and informational purposes only. I am not providing legal advice and nothing in this podcast should be construed as creating an attorney-client relationship. All right, so now let's dive into the world of patents and innovation. Join me as we explore the power of inspiration and how to turn your realities, (laughs) your ideas into realities. We are on week two of the 13-week journey to learn how to leverage your inspiration Last week was episodes one through four, where we covered what is intellectual property and what can and cannot be protected. If you missed those, you can find them on ibgr.network or at my podcast webpage, leveraginginspiration.com. Last last week, I encouraged you to take four, um, four actions regarding intellectual property. I wanted you to write down what is your intellectual property, what you want your intellectual property to accomplish, and what it is that you think you need in order to do to accomplish that with your intellectual property. So if you miss those, go, go back and, and review those. And, and one other thing is um, who have you told your secrets to? Write down the names of the people who you told your secrets to. So uh, go back and review those. And so this week we're covering utility patent strategy, patent patentability research, um, and the provisional versus non-provisional. We're going to talk about the patent process. So we're going to have the four parts the current and future state of the patent law, um, researching patents, the truth about non-provisional and provisionals and avoiding scams, and how to have a winning strategy for the patent process. So today, right now, we're going to talk about staying ahead of the game, navigating current and future state of patent law. My goal is to explain the law in a way for small business owners to understand, not just attorneys. So if I ever say something with too much legal jargon, please leave me comments, um, send me an email, let me know. Um, You can go to ibgr.network or my podcast site, leveraginginspiration.com. So in the years of 2013 and 2014, there were major changes to the patent law. If you haven't gotten an update since then, you're likely out of date. In 2013, the major change was from Congress. We already discussed the first to file, um, which used to be a first to invent. Now we're on the... um, So the next thing that happened in 2014 was that uh, uh, the Supreme Court actually had a major decision that introduced a new test to determine if an invention was eligible for a patent. And the, uh, just real quick, my thought of how Congress works is they they create a rule and that rule is going forward. But the Supreme Court, on the other hand, when they make a decision, when, when they render a decision, they're deciding on a law typically that hasn't changed in maybe a hundred years. So it's been the law on the books and they're saying, well, everybody else had it wrong and we're going to tell you the right way to interpret this rule. So that's what they did in patent laws. They said, 
Well, everybody's had it wrong, and so we're going to tell you how you should have been interpreting patents and what's eligible for patents so that existing rule applies to everybody. It doesn't undo past court cases, but it applies to those even who already have a patent who's, that's been granted and that patent comes under review in court. It applies to people that have a pending patent application. So, um, and so this is why it's important to understand that your strategy doesn't just depend on knowing the facts, but it also depends on knowing how the facts can change. The law usually only changes in minor ways here and there, but it hasn't been that way, especially the last 20 years in patent law. Patent law seems to change a lot more, um, and some other time I can go into why I think that is. So patent law is often compared to a pendulum where it swings from one side of being anti-patent to the other side of being pro-patent, and unfortunately where we're at is more on the side of anti-patent than pro-patent. Um, we talked about in episode three uh, the changes in the law to the one-year grace period making it much riskier to make any public disclosure of your inventions. That's one of the changes in the 2013 law called the American Events Act. And they also included a provision that made it easier for patents to be attacked after they're granted. And this is uh, mostly in business method patents, where a patent covers a method of running a business. Now, different areas of the law have different allowance rates. And allowance rates is where they're measuring, uh, the patent office measures and tracks when does the patent examiner say, okay, this patent is ready to be grant to be issued as a patent, and that's the allowance. That's a key metric that the patent office measures. So, in 2013, um, even though the the law had changed, that that Supreme Court case hadn't come into effect. That was 2014. The acceptance rate or the allowance rate was. 32.4% for business methods. We're going to talk just about business methods here. And what that really means, it doesn't mean that everything else is rejected. That means they're measuring after two reviews from the patent office, if it's considered in condition for issuing as a patent. If it's not, then it it didn't meet that statistic. You can keep asking for reviews over and over. Um, so the 32.4% was the ones that made it to issuance after only two reviews. And so that's where it was at. And then the 2014 um, issue, uh, decision came out, and it took a little while for that to really have its biggest impact. So in 2016, the rate went down to 6.2%. So of all the applications that were filed when they were reaching that point in 2016, they were uh, kept rejecting the vast majority of them. So, but then the way the law worked was the ones that were rejected, some of them appealed and went to the appeals court and the appeals court said, to the patent office, well, you're not interpreting this law right. You're being too strict. Um, and it also gave additional clarification on how to navigate the current law. So in 2019, they came out with new guidelines in the patent office that's part of the regulation that said how to get through this patent eligibility for business methods or anything that is being judged as uh, under this new standard. And so the uh, the rate of acceptance kept climbing until 2022, where it made it up to 34.2%, which was the highest point in, in 
past 13 years. So this is an example of the pendulum of patent law. The allowance rate went from 32.4% for patent allowed within two patent office reviews down to 6.2% and then back up to 34.2% all in 10 years. And so what this means is if your patent was rejected in 2019 or 2018 when we were at the low point, uh, your chances of a success would keep rising if you kept asking for further reviews. Uh, this happens, so that was one little pendulum swing that we saw. This also happens generally in patent law where Congress or the Supreme Court will make major swings or they, they've got a, an attitude. In the 1980s, Congress and the Supreme Court had the attitude that anything under the sun made by man could be patented. And now the 2013 law um, put more limitations saying, you know, you could say it's a higher standard. Um, there's less things we think should be patented. So it's swung away from anything can be patented to where um, we want to be more selective of, of what we grant patents to. Um, so when you are filing a patent application, understanding kind of where we're at, if we're at a low point and we might have to wait for things to change, is, is part of what helps you make a good strategic decision. Have is you can also choose not to file a patent if you could keep your invention secret. Now, not everything really works as a secret, but you might be able to keep a key part. If you file the patent, would you be able to enforce it? Because if you could keep it secret, could your competitors keep it secret? And you wouldn't even know if you're infringing it. So those are some of the things to think about when you're uh, preparing to have a patent um, drafted. So that's, that's all the time we have for today. Uh, I'm Wayne Carroll. This is Leveraging Inspiration, the Inspired Patent Podcast.